So you want to start taking pictures of the night sky but don't know where to start. Before marching into your local telescope depot or scouring the likes of the interwebs, here are a few things to consider before diving head first. One of the biggest things to start with is expectation versus reality. What I mean by this is if you see other people's work and expect to produce the same results on the first try, prepare for total disappointment. The internet is littered with images of your favourite astro targets taken by various people with varying skill sets but all have one big thing in common, time. They have all had the time to gain the experience to get them where they are today. Even if you're a seasoned photographer, everything that you have learned in photography needs to be unlearnt. One of the biggest questions you have to ask yourself is, why do you want to get into astrophotography? If there is one thing an astronomer hates, more than the clouds, is an astronomer that isn't an astronomer. You don't need to be an astronomer to do astrophotography, but it helps if you know where things are, or at least know some of the names of the stars above your head. This is important as it will help you find things. Now I know some of you are going to say that's what plate solving is for, but let's face it, when it fails, doesn't work, or you're not in the mood to drag £300 worth of office computer equipment, knowing where things are will help you in the long term. Over time, you will learn where everything is, especially when you image the same target regularly. There are things that even I don't know what I don't even know. Every day I explore the universe and something new pops up, I don't have a clue what it is that I'm looking at, let alone know where to begin to research. Discovering ionized particles in the atmosphere created by gravity waves when doing Milky Way pictures is a prime example, and I still don't know any more than I did when I first started. But it doesn't end there either. The amount of pieces required to even take a picture is head scratching. There are so many parts that make up what astrophotographers refer to as an imaging train is often left out of the equipment list. Budding astrophotographers look at someone else's equipment list but never know that it is not just a camera and a telescope. Things like adapters, extension tubes, finder scopes, guide scopes, flatteners. The list just goes on and on. Make sure you do your homework ahead of time before getting into this. Was once set, but then set. Excuse me. So let's talk about equipment. Far too often does a first-time astrophotographer buy the largest telescope they can get their fingers on, only to find that the device is nothing more than a nightmare on a tripod. And no, you cannot do long exposures with a tripod with an 8-inch telescope. By far the most important part of buying a telescope for astrophotography is the mount and not the scope itself. How well the mount performs at tracking and your ability to align it to the North Star will determine how successful you will be. Over time you will get better at it as long as you practice. I often advise first time users to make use of their own camera and lens assuming they own one with a smaller inexpensive tracking mount. This is by far and wide the easiest way to get started. Would you believe that this picture was taken with nothing more than a mirrorless camera and a 135mm lens? So let's get into the crux of this journey. Budget. Money. I'm not interested in what's in your wallet, I'm more interested in peace of mind. You have to be realistic when it comes to buying anything. Set a target and see if you can achieve what your expectations are given your own limitations. You don't need to spend a fortune to get into astrophotography, you just have to be realistic. I always like to start people into tracking mounts like the one mentioned before mainly because it's affordable and more importantly it's a good barometer to measure if the person will be interested and want to carry on. Never assume anything that you buy is considered useless or obsolete within weeks of learning. More often than not, budget telescopes are the number one items that end up in the trash or on Craigslist because the item did not do what the user expected. If you own a good tripod and a camera, for 300 bucks you can actually get a tracking mount and be well on your way to snapping pictures versus $600 for a mass market telescope and you still haven't purchased the parts to attach the camera, let alone discovered what you don't even know yet.
Let's face it, for those who learn to drive, you didn't just magically jump into a car and start driving. You had to learn. More importantly, you practiced driving in circles at your local parking lot at about 2 a.m. in the morning, with your teacher yelling, brake, mirror, mirror, brake. Astrophotography is much like driving a car. The more you do it, the better you get, the closer you are to achieving your expectation. A critical part of astrophotography is establishing a workflow, setting up everything in your living room and testing everything out. Break it down and do it again. Find different ways of building up your checklist of things to do. Far too often have we all seen first-time users fumble in the dark with packaging of an item that was fresh off the shelf less than three hours ago. Twenty-six megapixels, three point seven six microns, fifty thousand electron full well. This probably means nothing to you if you're new to this, and it should, or should it? Spec wars are nothing more than a thorn in the side of consumers with a fantastic saying, analysis paralysis. These sea of numbers and statistics are nothing more than marketing terminology used to help sell a product over another one. Let's face it, we don't want technology from yesteryear, we want it from today. Advanced users and scientific researchers rely heavily on this information to calculate various science things, and why you need to know this is something you don't need to know. Remember, you haven't even taken your first image yet and you're already theory crafting your Astronomy Picture of the Day award. You wouldn't know what reality is until you've taken your first shot. The only statistic that you should worry about is how long you can expose the camera for. Remember, you start with what you have, make it count. One potato, two potatoes. Once you settle into your setup, regardless of what it is that you decided to purchase, you're going to need all the help you can get. There are many astronomers and astrophotographers who are willing to help. Best practice is to find someone else that is also within your skill set so you can learn together. You don't have to be standing next to each other, you can be on the other side of the planet and still gain all this knowledge. There are also tons and tons of resources to pick from, but buyer beware. If you find yourself surrounded with information overload, this is perhaps not the best place to be reading. More often than not, you are thrown conflicting information, terminology and acronyms that you don't even know what they mean. That only adds to the confusion. Now that you've gotten an idea of what's going on, now is the time to get out and look at what awaits you. Remember, part of astronomy is about discovery. You may only have gotten into this just to take pretty pictures, but before you know it, the next generation will be knocking on your door asking the same questions you asked. Have a clear idea of what your expectation is, and we can help make it a reality.